Now, so that, first off, before we get going, I'll tell you, a, a priest asked a little boy if he knew what matrimony meant. The little boy replied, sure, it's the place between heaven and hell where a man pays for his sins. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's purgatory. Oh, okay. <laughs> we know everybody. Everybody's getting in on this. They don't want anybody to get left out. And all this, you know, everybody's all of every, everybody's got something going on now. The atheists now, believe it or not, the atheists have instituted a dial of prayer. Believe it or not, the atheists have instituted a dial of prayer. What they do is you call it, it rings and rings and nobody answers. <laughs> I know, burn the book. Amen. <laughs> Get your Bible out. Stand for the reading of the Word. Remember next week we're going to go back to the seven churches of Revelation. And, and, and just a lot of times I, I can tell you just from, from many years of pastoring that when you go right straight through Revelation and never stop and take a break, that it becomes very, uh, uh, I can't think of the word other than get some people's nerves that bothers them, that, you know, they go, can you talk about something else every now and then? That's why we have been instituted back to basics on the uh, first Sunday of every month. And what's pretty cool is the first Sunday of every month you talk about back to basics, and the rest of the Sunday we're going to talk about current events and what's going to happen later. Okay, in Revelation. So that's, that's, that's really, really cool. Look at what I say. That's really cool. <laughs> okay, we're just going to read. Just going to, going to, going to, uh, let's start at verse, verse, uh, verse 10. Verse 9. Ready? Second, Second Kings, verse 9. If you don't know where Second Kings is, where is it? It's right after First Kings. Okay, it's checking on it. And it came to pass when they were gone over that Elijah said unto Elisha, Ask what I shall do for thee before I be taken away from thee. And Elisha said, I pray thee let a double portion of thy spirit be upon me. And he said, Thou hast asked a hard thing. Nevertheless, if thou see me when I am taken from thee, it shall be so unto thee. But if not, it shall not be so. And it came to pass, as they still went and talked, that behold, there appeared a chariot of fire and horses of fire, and parted them both asunder. And Elijah went up in a whirlwind unto heaven. Wow. Wow. Somebody say rapture. Rapture. Amen. Father, we love you. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for all that you've done for us, Lord. We thank you, God, that you're in our midst, Lord, that you're moving for us. And we thank you right now for what you're going to do. We ask you to bless this service. Lord, we know, God, that this is a tough time that we live in, and, and it's kind of even hard to even know what's black and white anymore. Most, most stuff now is gray, and some of the grays is just shades of gray, and, and God, I know your Bible isn't shade of, your word is not shades of gray, but God, it seems to be the biggest thing nowadays, and it depends on who's most popular and gets the best shade of gray. I, it just drives me crazy, Lord, but you got this. I ask you right now, Lord, to minister my to us and through us, Father. And let this day be for you and about you. So we can be for you and about your business. In the name of Jesus we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. You be seated on the way down until somebody that passes behind us. The future is ahead of us. God is with us. And nothing, nothing, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. All right, so here we go. That, that's just, I'm going to give you just a few, just a few slides from three weeks ago to kind of keep you going in this, not, not a bunch. Uh, we're about to experience one of the greatest events in human history. Something dramatic is getting ready to take place, and it summons the end of the church age. The church age, of course, is the age of grace and the age of the Spirit. Now, we, now we talked a lot about this last time, or not as far as we're going on this now. I want you to know something. When God gives us prophecy, every prophecy God gives us, here's what he does. Before he actually has the event take place, he always, look throughout the Bible, he always uses pictures and types before he actually does the event. It's very, very, very powerful that he would do such a thing. 
Because see, I like to think of it this way. God always leaves a trail of prophetic breadcrumbs uh, in the form of pictures and types that lead up to the actual prophetic event years before it happens. It shows that God is always in control and God is always calling history. Although Satan is the god of this world and he's the prince of the power of the air, although he's got all this power that he is exerting right now, he still is a defeated foe. We are fighting through victory and he's fighting through defeat. There's the difference. Amen? Amen. So, so although he's fighting, he's a defeated foe. The problem is he won't accept it. He won't accept his defeat. Get ready. Some of y'all are going to get upset. He's fighting through, vic through, through defeat. We're fighting through victory. The problem is he won't accept his defeat and we won't accept our victory. Wow. One more time. Satan won't accept his defeat, and we won't accept our victory. Okay? A lot of times I say, if he would just leave me alone, he's not going to leave you alone. Matter of fact, the harder you try to live for God, the more he's going to fight you. He's going to come against you. So, so watch this now. Let's just move on a little bit further. Because I want to get into this. I love it. It's so, so awesome. Uh, these are some of the types of the rapture in the Bible. We talked about all these last time. We're not this time. I'm just going to call their names. Enoch. Enoch. He was translated. Uh, uh, Elijah. We're getting ready to talk about Philip. Paul. Jesus. Now there's more examples, but these are the primary main examples uh, and types uh, in the Bible. So now, let's go a little bit further. I'm going to turn this thing off. There we go. There it is. It raptures away a little bit slower than I thought it would. Alright. When rapture come along, when, when Elijah was getting ready to leave, it was literally, and these are the last things we're going to talk about from the last couple of weeks, it was a planned event because God told him it was going to happen. He told Elisha it's going to happen. Everybody knew it was going to happen because they said, is this the day your master is going to leave you? So that's a big thing around there. It's a promised event. God said he was going to do it. It was a powerful event because he didn't just say he's going to do it. He did it. And not only did he do it, he said, if you will trust me and follow me wherever I go, then you can have that double portion that you would like. So here we go. Here we go. The rapture. Get ready. Elijah's rapture was first just like today's rapture that's getting ready to take place. Y'all ready? It was imminent. They were walking along and talking. That's it. Walking and talking. The Bible says, all over the New Testament, when it's talking about the first or the rapture, and it's talking about the second the coming of Christ, when you, you got to remember uh, the day of the Lord. Whenever you hear the day of the Lord mentioned by Jesus or in the Bible, the day of the Lord is more than one day. The day of the Lord is a series of events. It starts with the rapture and it ends with the second coming. That's the day of the Lord. The seven years in between is when God shows his wrath. Okay? So, so again, it's imminent. One of these days, let me tell you, let me just read, let me read some new, track, new, new watch this. The rapture could happen at any moment. Y'all know that? Any moment. I mean, it could happen today. Wouldn't it be cool if we're talking about the rapture now and we're gone? Except if anybody got left behind, they might not like it. <laughs> Amen. So, the Bible says in Luke 12, 40, you must also be ready because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. Wow. It's getting ready to happen, church. It's getting ready. Now, of course, I say it all the time. We'll go back in again. There's the pre-trib, the mid-trib, the post-trib, the A-trib. Some believe that's going to happen before the primary tribulation. Uh, that's what I believe. I believe that's what the Bible teaches. But I, I'm not saying I'm the only one. And you got to listen to me. That becomes a cult. You listen for yourself. Read it for yourself. You figure it out. I'm here to guide you, not to brainwash you. Okay? So, But I believe it's first. Then there are some people that believe it's going to happen mid-trib. But again, they're thinking we're already in tribulation period now. So there's mid-trib. But see, if it's mid-trib, you know three and a half years after the Antichrist is revealed, then it's going to happen. 
It's imminent. It's going to happen like this without you even thinking about it. Then there's the post trend that people believe that the rapture is going to take place after the end of the seven years of tribulation. We're all going to go through the tribulation. Then there's a trib. They believe there's not going to be a rapture at all. We're just going to blend in uh, to the millennium. Okay? So, again, I, I can tell you about that later, but we don't want to get into that right now. Now, so first, it's imminent. It could happen any time. Look, at around, look around you. Look at what's happening. Uh, has anybody had any dry spells lately? <laughs> Whether or not, uh, I mean, it's wet. It's so wet. We're thinking about we're, we're, when our dog goes out in the back, goes out to the dog, you know, we have to put those little floaties on his arm. So when he comes out, he can come back. <laughs> okay, or she can come back. Amen. Uh, so, 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 number one, it's imminent. Number two, it's sudden. Have any time when it happens, it's going to be like that. I mean, it's going to be so fast. You're not even going to have a chance to even think, of, wait for me. No, there's no wait for me. Once the rapture takes place, that's it. It's over. Gone. Done. So if you are a carnal, lukewarm Christian, and we'll talk about that in the seven churches, there's a good chance when you hear, do, 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 you go, huh? Where'd everybody go? That's not popular, but that's the truth. Jesus said to the book, to the church that lay out of sin, he says, I, I'm just going to spew you out of my mouth because you're lukewarm. And spew you out of my mouth literally is translated or believed to be translated in, I'm going to put you, I'm going to throw you into the tribulation. So think about this. So, suddenly, suddenly a chariot of fire. The rapture is going to happen very, very quickly. Amen? The Bible says, 1 Corinthians 15, 51, 52, and I'm going to put some outlines out there for y'all. Uh, uh, when you come back in Tuesday night or come in uh, next week, you'll have all these outlines. So I did outlines for the first part one. This is part two. It's called these scriptures that you can use so you can have it because you're not going to necessarily convince anybody that does not believe in the rapture or doesn't believe what you believe. You might not necessarily convince them, but at least you can keep yourself centered. Okay? I mean, I, never, I know that there's certain people I'll never, never convince. You know, I told you my boss man for the longest time was an atheist when I was at Procter & Gamble. And when I got ready to leave, he called me to the side. I said, uh, yes, sir, Ralph, what's going on? He said, I just want to tell you something. I said, what? Talk to me, buddy. He said, well, you're leaving. I just think you ought to know this. I said, what? He said, when you started working on our team, I was an atheist. He said, but I've watched you all these years, and I'm convinced now there is a God. And I just want you to know, your, look, I didn't say a word to him. It was my light shining. Amen? He said, I'm convinced now there is a God, and I just want you to know that before you live. Okay. So again, you may not convince anybody else, but if you've got this information, you're at least loaded, and you can go back to it, so at least you can keep yourself centered, keep your feet on the ground, but if somebody does happen to pull some mess on you and try to throw something at you that you can't figure out, then you got this to go back to. So get these outlines. They'll be out there, be out there uh, uh, next week. So it was sudden. But not only was the rapture or Elijah's rapture sudden, which is going to be the same way here. It says there's going to be two in the bed and one taken. There's going to be two in the field and one taken. There we go. Two doing whatever. Two doing something and, and one's taken. Okay? So now, uh, selective. Just talked about it. I got ahead of myself. Selective. Okay? It separated two of them. Elijah left. Elisha stayed. Elisha stayed. Uh, and I'm going to really dig deep in this thing. I mean dig, 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 dig. Elijah, when he left, because it was a type and a picture, if it had been the actual rapture, both of them would have been taken. As far as the New Testament rapture, but it was a picture and type of what was coming. 
So Elijah was being taken by. I just want to say this. Uh, for those that you're a true believer, I'm not talking about you got every eye dotted, every T crossed, you never make a mistake, you never sin, you never have a bad attitude, you're always perfect. Matter of fact, if you're always perfect, let me just say something. You make me sick. Because <laughs> I don't know of anybody that's always perfect. Okay? But, the rapture can catch up with true believers. Those that were kind of playing with it, kind of playing around with it, they're left behind. I believe, just like God left Elisha behind to finish the work, I believe those that got left behind are going to wind up pulling together and letting God use them in the tribulation. I don't want to be one of them to be up. Amen? I want to go in the first load. Amen? Amen. So, so watch this. Matthew 24, 40 and 42. There shall be two in the field. The one shall be taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. One shall be taken and the other left. Watch therefore for you know not what hour the Lord doth come. Amen? Let's see. I'm, almost, I'm getting, I'm getting, getting close to getting through. And it's some good stuff. Amen. 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 So you see a picture of like how good this shows you what is going to happen thousands of years later. So, so here we go. Let's get ready. We're getting to do another one. Glorious. Glorious. When the rapture takes place, it's going to be a glorious time for us. Amen. He went to heaven. The rapture is beyond human comprehension. You say, well, how in the world can a rapture take place? Well, can you imagine a 600-year-old man coming up and going, I'm going to build a boat. What kind of boat? Well, it's going to hold all the animals. Okay, how are you going to get them there? God's going to send them. How many are you going to carry? Uh, two of one, two of the clean, and seven of the unclean. I mean, seven of the clean, two of the unclean. How, how, how are you going to get it done? God's going to handle it. How long is it going to take you to build? Well, God said it was about 120 years. So you're going to build this boat. For what? Well, it's going to rain. What's rain? We've never seen rain. Yeah, but it's, it's going to rain. What's rain? That's when water falls out of the sky. We don't need water out of the sky. It comes out of the ground. and we got a greenhouse effect. Everybody's fine. It's coming. Really? And then after get on the ship, God waits seven days before he closes the door to give everybody a chance to repent. And people still didn't crawl in. And then the rain came. Wow. So, again, that was beyond human comprehension. And, of course, the ark also is, it can be a picture and type uh, of the rapture. So here, watch this. Let's get going here. I'm getting, I'm getting close to the end. First Thessalonians 4, 16 to 17. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump, trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Out of that, those who are still alive are left, and left will be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so will we ever be with the Lord forever. Why does God call the dead first? I mean, let me just explain something. This, I don't want this. Uh, Theology can get very technical and can get boring. So I'm trying not to be too technical or boring. Uh, sometimes I was talking theology when I was going to Lee University. Sometimes I would, I, I, I would talk theology and I'd, I'd put myself to sleep. I mean, when you die, man is a trichotomy, uh, body, soul, spirit. Man is a trichotomy. The Bible says... When you die, your body goes back to the ground. But your soul and your spirit is with God. So, just like Bethany right now. Bethany, her body is in the ground, but her soul and spirit's with God. And people say, well, she's not going to get her reward. No, she's not. She's up there being protected by God. It's not time for rewards yet. Her rewards will not come 
till after the rapture and the marriage supper of the Lamb. That's when the, the beam of seat, the beam of judgment seat, and the marriage supper of the Lamb, because her works are living on behind her. So, when the rapture takes place, the Bible says that we're not all going to be, we're, we're, we're all going to be changed. We've got to put on a glorified body. In order to put on a glorified body to live in God's presence, then what hap has to happen is, right now it's just soul and spirit. All your people that died before you, I think about all the people in this church that have died, you know, Brother Sister Gray, Brother Sister Bonner, Sister Kathleen, other, their, body, their, their soul and their spirit's in heaven, but their body's in the ground. In order to have a glorified body, they got to get a body. The body's in the ground. So at the rapture, what happens is, the Bible says that, that the corrupt was put on incorruption. So, when Jesus comes back, when he comes back at the rapture, he's bringing those souls, souls and spirits with him. The Bible even says with thousands. He brings them with him at the rapture. And what happens is, the body that's in the ground comes up, and when it comes up, their spirit and their soul meets together with their body and then they put on an incorruptible body. At the same time, those that are alive and remain, we're going to be changed too. We're going to have an incorruptible body. So what's going to happen is that the moment of the rapture, all the dead is gone. All the dead is gone. Amen? <coughs> so, here's why, why, so why, they have to, why does the dead in Christ have to, <coughs> why do they rise first? Because they got six, they got six foot to come up to meet you. Some people, you don't even know where all their body's at. They may, and I don't like get gross now, but you know wherever wherever it's at, it's got to come together. And when it comes up, we're all going to be changed, and we're going to be with Jesus. That's a very powerful, powerful thought. All right, enough of theology. Just enough that you know that, that you know Paul Paul weren't crazy. Amen. Although they said much learning had made him mad, he was. All right. Next. Ready? Confusion. The Bible says that Elisha cried out, tore his clothes. The other guys mocked him. Do you realize that when the rapture takes place, it's going to shock the minds of those that are There's going to be some that say, what happened? And they've already, I've already heard this. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what source I heard it from, but I have heard this. There's some agencies that have already prepped themselves so when the rapture takes place, they can explain what happened to them. Also heard by some folks, and I, 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 I'm not too much into this one, but I've heard by some folks that when the rapture takes place, it'll be so few compared to how many is on the earth that they won't even hardly know. There's all kinds of theories out there. I know that if you're taken, I'm still here. I got a problem. Amen. They can tell me what to tell me. I know I missed the boat. Amen. I missed the train. Believe it or not, there'll be people that the rapture took during church service. There'll be some people that'll never even know it happened. The church will be just like it was when they came in, just like it was when they leave. They'll find out when they get outside and turn on the radio. Some, millions of people are missing. Because they're playing church. They're not living church. I want to ask you a question. It's hard, but I want you to think about it because the rapture is that close. Are you playing church or living church? Is the only time you think about God is when you're here? Or do you think about God all the time and let him use you? See, the Bible, the Bible also says, it says, uh, 
Know yourselves that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as to prevail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. First Thessalonians 5, 2 and 3. Let me ask you a question. What are we here for? What's your purpose in life? Some purposes in our life we don't even know yet because there's still things coming until the day we die. Even after we die, our, our legacy will live on beyond us. That's why we don't get uh, our rewards when we die because, because our legacy lives on, our influence lives on, the people that we touch live on. I mean, I'm you, I can't even get you. Know, I cannot walk in this church without thinking about Brother Hastings. It just is always there. It's always in my mind. When I open the Bible, start preaching, think about Brother Hastings. You know, he, he had such an influence on me. And I know that he's had the influence on some of the ways I've done things over the years. Let me ask you a question. Are you ready to meet Jesus? Now, this isn't some, you know, uh, uh, actually, <laughs> this is going to be awesome right now. Some of y'all are going to have to bear with me. But I, I, I'm going to. Y'all guys, come on up here. Get ready. Let me don't get don't, don't let me get going good. Y'all, we already talked about this. So don't think I'm crazy. Go ahead and say he's crazy.